So on my previous Top 5 Tuesday video, Carlos left a comment that had the most thumbs up. So I'm going to do this video for you guys, and that is top sneaker brands that were copied by other brands. Thank you, Carlos, for the suggestion, and we'll cover that in this video. What is going on guys, Hess here from collectivekicks.com and if you wanna shop this week's top deals, check the link in the description and go see what I've tweeted through the week. Also a big major shout out to Forrest Pond who actually let me use his music for these videos. So thank you to him, um, he's a local DJ and friend. If you guys wanna know more about Forrest Pond, check his social in the description. Thank you Carlos for the suggestion. A lot of interest in this and I did a lot of investigating to come up with this top five list. If you guys wanna leave some comments in the comment section for future top five Tuesday videos. So basically since the dawn of the sneaker era, it's been a copy and paste uh, methodology that's worked for a lot of major, major companies that are where they are today because of the fact that they bit off of another company. And basically just did this three-step strategy that Heist Nabaidi actually pointed out in one of their articles that I read. So the three-step method goes like this. You copy presently loved design, one that is really, really popular on the market. Number two, you get enough money from selling this bite of a product that you can actually start researching and developing your own unique core product. And then number three, you've developed that product and can release your own unique designs based on the money that you made from piggybacking off of other people. So as usual, there are a couple runner-ups that I wanted to mention to you guys before we get into the actual top five. First is the technology of Flyknit in general, not a specific shoe, but I wanted to mention it because the technologies do get copied as well. Obviously, technologies like Flyknit, that Primate was kind of mimicked afterwards. New Balance has their own version of Flyknit and many, many companies have kind of taken that Nike Flyknit approach. Um, and I just wanted to mention that as kind of a stolen technology. One of the specific shoes that just missed the countdown was the Bapesta, Bape Air Force One Bites. Those are really, really close replicas of the Air Force One. And also I wanted to make note of the Converse All-Star Chuck Taylors. Those have been copied over and over and over again. And the fact of the matter is, um, Converse actually has like 40 different lawsuits out there for different companies basically biting those shoes. So wanted to mention those ones. So now that you have a little bit of background to what I've been researching, let's go ahead and get into the top five sneakers that were copied by other companies. So the number five spot actually goes to Adidas Boost and Puma Energy. So this is one of those ones where it's really, really fuzzy. In fact, there's not a full resolution. I believe there's still open lawsuits uh, between Adidas and Puma. Puma is accusing Adidas of having stolen the ETPU sole design uh, to which it owns the rights to. So that's part of Puma's beef with Adidas and part of the reason why that lawsuit is still going on. And I've actually done a couple different videos on these in the past if you guys search. Puma really had the technology concept for Boost before Adidas did. At least that's what it is on paper. So in 2009, Puma was actually working with BASF, which is a chemical company, and they were designing a Boost-like material. In 2011 though, BASF termed their partnership with Puma and then decided to work exclusively with Adidas to formulate Adidas Boost. So since then, it's been kind of a big mess with lawsuits left and right. In 2013, Boost was introduced to the market. Then in 2015, Puma Energy, N-R-G-Y, was introduced to the market. And Puma actually ended up pairing up with the Huntsman Corporation, which is another chemical company to create the energy type material, which is kind of a bite on the Adidas Boost. But that's the reason why I put this one in the countdown because it was really unclear which came first, the Puma or the Adidas. It's kind of hard to say. Market-wise, we know, but there's a lot of backstory as to who actually had the rights to being able to use that. So number four spot goes to the Nike Cortez. And this is an interesting one because the Nike Cortez model is not the original model. So this was pulled from a complex article that I found from Brandon Edler. Nice work on this article, sir. So in 1969, ASICS, which was then known as the Onitsuka Tiger, uh, released the Cortez. And Phil Knight, who actually was a sales rep for Tiger in the 60s, felt that he had been instrumental in the development of the shoe. So he took the design with him after he left 
and went to form Nike. And this is where the legal battle began. So in 1974, it was decided that both companies could actually utilize the shoe, but Nike was the only one that could be called the Cortez. So since then, the Tiger was known as the Corsair. Oddly enough, 30 years later, both companies are still producing the shoe to this day. So they have significant value in this day and age, regardless of the fact that one was a copy off of the other. So number three spot is an interesting one in my opinion. It goes to a company that has been ripping Nikes and Adidas, but is approved so through the companies, which is very interesting. And that is Hender Scheme. I believe that's how you pronounce the name, but Hender Scheme basically creates a high end version, more artistic version of very, very popular pop culture sort of models on the market, such as the Air Jordan 4, the Air Force 1, the Adidas NMDs, and so on. It's definitely a play on of these popular models. It's absolutely copying what is being presented, but it's repurposing them and making it into a, what he calls an art project. So maybe by calling it an art project, there's legal loopholes that make it so he can't be touched from companies. Maybe these companies don't want to sue because even though he is copying, it's making the companies relevant because he is copying those. What do you guys think about this whole Hender scheme kind of copy sort of thing? Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know. They're really expensive versions though of these popular models. Like the Air Jordan 4 retails at $190. These ones are upwards of $800, $1,000, $1,500 I believe. But the fact that he can mimic the produced version is very interesting. <laughs> Moving on to the number two spot is a pair of shoes that I have in hand actually. And this is the one pair of Nike pumps that did not actually end up retroing yet. So this is one that I really, really am happy that I have a really super clean version of. And this is the Air Force 180 pumps worn by none other than the Admiral, David Robinson, man. This guy was so dope back in the day. And Nike ended up creating this Nike pump shoe that was revolutionizing basketball at the Wait, Nike didn't create the pump? Oh, my bad. So Reebok was actually the first company to release a pump on a pair of sneakers in 1998, followed by Nike and other brands that actually copied. But Nike released in 1998 the Nike Air Pressure, which actually had an external pump that you actually had to use to pump up the shoe. In 1990, they had the Command Force that had a pump similar to this on the shoe. And then in 91, they had the pump here with the release valve on this pair, the Nike Air Force 180s with the 180 air unit on the bottom. Dominique Wilkins was the face of the Reebok pump. And that dude was just ridiculous back in the day. Just super thunder dunks. Love Dominique Wilkins. And then D Brown in 1991 won the slam dunk contest in the Reebok pumps as well. And then you had people like Shaq who actually had his own uh, version of a pump as well. And then in 1994, the, the Reebok pump was also featured on a movie called Above the Rim featuring Tupac Shakur. But Reebok was really onto something interesting back then. The fact that you could pump up the shoe and fill in the capacity of the shoe and um, really have a more snug, customized fit for the shoe based on that pump was really something and they were the originators of that technology. All right, so here we are, the number one spot on the countdown. And if you guys are enjoying the content, if you guys can drop a like on the video, it is much appreciated. Where to begin with this number one spot though, it goes to Skechers in general. I don't even know, I can't, pinpoint one specific shoe. I'm gonna talk about a couple of them. If you guys wanna see a separate video of the top five sneakers that Skechers has ripped off, you guys let me know and leave a comment and I'll do that video in the future as well because I can deep dive into this for an hour. So Skechers has ripped everything. Adidas Boost with Skechers Burst. They've ripped off of Tom's, the charity shoe that donates every pair that's bought. They've ripped the Adidas Stan Smith with the Skechers Onyx. Spring Blades with Mega Blades. And from 2014 onward, they've definitely been ripping the Yeezy lines as well. I honestly don't know how Skechers is able to do it. They basically just prey on popular models, recreate their own version for cheaper, and then mass produce and sell those. It's honestly something that Skechers prides themselves on, which is very interesting how you have a company and their core business model is to prey on other popular models to become something. And they've actually done that quite well because they've become a major competitor in the footwear market. I will mention the lawsuit against Skechers, however. In 2016, Adidas won the lawsuit. Skechers actually had to pull the product from shells, which was a bite off of the uh, Adidas Stan Smiths. It was really a straight up mimic copy. And the fact that Adidas won that lawsuit makes me wonder like if more brands should be doing this and pushing lawsuits for these 
uh, sneakers could be removed because ultimately it does hurt the sales from the major brands, but it is a huge financial drain to go to court to win these lawsuits and win these battles against these companies. But it is interesting to see these lawsuits pop up more and more as the years go by. But that is the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think about my top five. Did you guys have a different pair of sneakers that should be in this top five list? Leave a comment with that shoe in the comment section that has been ripped off. But thank you guys for the content suggestion. And I definitely look forward to more of you guys leaving comments and suggesting other videos for the future. Much appreciated for those that do that. Anyways, check out collectivekicks.com if you guys want to see any of the sneaker deals that are going on right now this week. And then subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I do top five videos every single week. Have a good one, guys. Peace. Mm.